Hi friends, this is Lauren Taylor from Lauren Taylor Made and I'm so excited to be celebrating Pretty Pink Posh's 10th birthday here on the scrapbook.com YouTube channel. We're going to use some of the new goodies today and mix and match with some of my favorite scrapbook.com exclusives and some of my favorite tools that you can also get from scrapbook.com. So I'm going to be using the layered birthday wreath. So let's start with the A stencil and I've got my waffle flower grip mat secured onto my 12 by 12 black mat from scrapbook.com. I also have my little waffle flower mini ink pad holder and I'm going to be using different pink fresh studio inks from the ink cube collections that you can get at scrapbook.com. Now with the ink blending through the wreath, you can do one solid color for each of the three layers, but I want to do a multicolored wreath, so I'm going to be using my mint tape to help with masking while I use my blending brushes to add in the color. So I'm starting with a pink color and I'm coloring in the balloons and each time I finish an area of coloring I'm just going to move my masking tape, the mint tape, to be able to you know, color the next section that I want to color on the stencil. So I won't show you every single coloring otherwise we'd be here much longer than you'd want to be here. But I'm just going to show how I colored all of my balloons pink, the bottoms of my cupcakes are a light orange. All of my gifts are going to be a soft mint green color and all of my party hats will be this pretty light teal color. So I just use the same pieces of mint tape as I move around the stencil and I will toss them after I finish each stencil and start clean on the next layer. So I've peeled off the A stencil and now I'm lining up my B stencil using the grid on my black mat as well as lining up the images so that way I know that they'll coordinate and lay nicely together. I'm going to go the other way now so I'm using a slightly darker teal blue color to add in the details onto my party hats. I have a darker mint to add in details to the gifts. I have a darker orange for the bottoms of my cupcakes and then I'm using the same color pink to color in the candles and stars that are throughout the stencil. There's lots of different little details that are on these stencils. It's so fun. I also love using pretty pink posh layering stencils with stencil paste as well. Now I'm not doing that for this project, but it's so easy to incorporate some shine when you have layered stencils. I'm going to bring in the final stencil again using the grid to help me line it up and the images I've already colored and this time I'm going to go a little bit more random with my coloring so I'm just going to have one color out at a time. To bring in some yellow I'm going to bring in a light yellow color and go in very softly of the frosting part of my cupcakes. I want them to look a little bit like buttercream frosting so very light handed with this yellow and using my blending brush. I'm also going to bring back in that dark blue to add the details on the gifts. So all of the ribbon and bows on all of my presents. For the tops of my party hats, I thought I would bring in green so they kind of match those gifts. So I'm bringing in the lighter of the mint green that I've used to color in the tops of all those party hats. Now I'm switching over to the smaller blending brushes from scrapbook.com and I'm adding in that pale orange to be the flames of my candles. I thought I'd also bring in some purple so I'm going to use purple to color in the strings of my balloons and then I'm going to use orange, blue, and green to fill in some of the confetti throughout the stencil. Again, I'm not going to be doing too much masking when I use the smaller brushes since I can control where the ink goes a little better with a smaller brush. After I'm all done, I'm going to do my final stencil reveal and I absolutely love this multicolored rainbow design using again the layered birthday wreath from Pretty Pink Posh's 10th birthday release. So let me clean up my desk here and we'll move on to the next thing that I'm going to do which will be some foiling. Now I do keep my glimmer hot foil system in a different area of my craft room so I'm just going to show you how I trim my foil down using my dies and my hot foil plates as guides just to make sure I know that I'm going to have plenty of room on this piece of white cardstock for my happy birthday sentiment.
So I'm using the Happy Birthday foil plates, also new with this release, and the Happy Birthday shadow dies that you can use either on their own. So there is a word die and a shadow die, or the shadow dies can be used to cut out the hot foiled sentiment. So if you're not a hot foiler, definitely grab the shadow dies because you can cut your own sentiments. But if you are a hot foiler and you don't like fussy cutting, you're going to want those shadow dies as well. So I'm using my Spellbinders trimming tool to cut my foil down to be the same size, if not slightly larger, than my white piece of cardstock. And I'll go ahead and run my hot foil machine off camera, and I'll also use the coordinating dies to cut out my happy birthday sentiment. Using the speckled aura uh, foil from Spellbinders. I think it's my favorite foil. I love the gold, but also rainbow shine that you get. Using different color cardstocks from the Sherbet collection from scrapbook.com, I'm also using the Birthday Candles die set, which is also new with this latest release. And I'm going to die cut my candles and flames out of different color cardstock from the Sherbet collection as well as white cardstock. I'm using my Magic Mat with my Spellbenders Platinum 6 machine exclusively in this beautiful matte black at scrapbook.com. I'll go ahead and run all these candles through. I don't want to keep you too long watching me die cut because that's not as fun, but I do have all of my candle pieces ready to go in one of my smaller stack and sort trays. I'm also going to cut, like I said, a couple extra candles out of that white cardstock that I use to do my hot foiling on. I don't like to waste my paper and then a bunch of the flame details. So the wick of the candles will be in white, but the flames I want to be colored. I've grabbed my Craft Pick Pro Tool, a new item that will be at scrapbook.com very soon, and I've placed all of my little flames on a piece of mint tape so I can keep them in place while I grab my glitter brush markers in orange juice and sunshine yellow to color in my flames. Once they are all colored in, I'll go ahead and set them aside to dry. I want to make sure that that glitter has a chance to get secured to my white cardstock. So I will move on to assembling the rest of my candles. And when I'm done assembling my five colorful rainbow candles, those flames will be ready to be glued on as well. So let me clean up my little extra glitter mess. I have a tendency to swipe my hands through any ink on my desk, so I like to clean up as I go. And I'm grabbing my Artiste glue that already has the fine point tip attached to the bottle. And I'm gonna be using that glue as well as my tweezers and my Craft Pick Pro tool to assemble all of these candles together. So the first two candles are very similar. I have the dark pink details with the hearts cut out and the stitching, and I'm going to attach it to my solid light pink candle cut out. First, I'm going to sandwich in the wick of my candle. So I'm gluing that down first, and then I will add the darker pink layer on top. And this is very similar to how I will assemble my star one. So I went ahead and skipped that. I glued a star die cut detail out of my orange cardstock to a solid yellow. Now for the next one, I have a bunch of different yellow die cuts and I wanna create a striped candle. So I have a white background. I added the wick of my candle and now I'm going to glue down each of the different stripes for my candle. Now the top and the bottom are the easiest to glue in place because they do have curved corners where it should be on the top and bottom of the candle. So I'll go ahead and glue those on first. So I'm adding my Artiste glue to the white piece of cardstock and then using my Craft Pick Pro tool to pick up my pieces and place them. Now since I want to create a striped candle, I'm going to just place one of the rectangles that were die cut so I know the spacing for the next layer of yellow. So I'm not gluing down that middle piece, I'm just gluing down the new one that I'm attaching right now, and then I'll go ahead and peel away the second piece so I'm creating a striped look. Now for the last piece I'm going to glue on, I'm not going to use a guide, I'm just going to do my best to make sure that this piece is centered between the two layers that I already have of the yellow. 
That will finish off the yellow candle, so let's move on to the green. I have two green candles, one solid and one with stitch details for a striped candle as well. This time it kind of goes around in a twirling pattern, I guess you could say. It, it goes around the candle rather than a full stripe. And then I'm going to add my artiste glue to the three sections where I've die cut out of a darker green the candle details. So I have my artiste glue in place and I'm using my Craft Pick Pro tool to pick up the different darker green pieces and attaching them to the candle. The last candle is pretty simple. I'm just attaching my blue with the kind of polka dot stitch design onto a white solid base that I've already attached my candle wick to. Now what I love about these dies is even though this is just the wick, there's a tiny small flame that you could color or you know have it be die cut out of another color of cardstock, but it's also very easy to attach these larger flames to. So I've added my artiste glue to all five of the candle wicks and then I'm adding on my glittery flames. I want to add a little bit more detail to my blue candle, so I'm gonna grab the deep blue glitter brush marker and I'm gonna color in the polka dots on my blue candle. So I'm gonna go through and do all of that and then I will be ready to move on to assembling my card. Now I already have my white paper that I did my stenciling on. It was trimmed down to four by five and a quarter. So I need a piece of cardstock to be the card base background. So I'm gonna use this lighter blue that I haven't used so far in my die cutting as the background. And this is from the six by eight Sherbet paper pad. So I'll go ahead and use my largest nested A2 die to trim down an A2 panel. I'm going to attach this panel using my tape runner to a top folding A2 card base. So I'll go ahead and attach that down starting at the crease or the bend or the score of my card base. So that way I can trim off any excess if I mess up my cutting of my card base. Next, I'm gonna layer on my stenciled background to the center of that blue piece of card stock. And the rest of my details are going to be popped up with foam adhesive. So I'm going to grab my foam squares to attach everything, starting with my happy birthday sentiment and then my candles. I want to make sure I have an idea of where I want all of my details to go on my card. So I'm doing what I call a dry run and placing all of my different elements onto the card. So I have an idea of how I need to attach as I add my foam adhesive and that onto my card. So I'm starting with the word birthday and I'm grabbing my foam squares and I'm just going to attach them behind the sentiment using my scissors to trim any pieces so that way they fit a little better behind the letters of the cursive birthday sentiment. I will attach that making sure to move my happy since I need to add foam adhesive to that and I will just repeat that same process for the word happy. I'm using the grid on my desk here just to help make sure I have my sentiments centered and I'm trying to make them look like they're both angled in the same direction. Now moving on to my candles, of course I'm going to start with my center candle so that way I have a starting point and then I'll add in the rest of the candles around my yellow candle that will be in the middle. So I'm using again my grid just to help make sure that candle is right in the middle and then I'll move on to adding the orange and pink on the left side of my yellow candle. I love a good rainbow so we're keeping things in a sort of traditional rainbow color order. So after the pink and the orange I'm going to add the green next to my yellow and finally my blue candle. That will finish off assembling all of the die cuts, but we're going to add a little bit more shine and bling to this card. I've grabbed my pops of color in the clear glitter snowflake, and I'm adding this pops of color to the hearts and stars of the first two candles, to the white and lighter green stripes of the next two, and then covering all of those blue polka dots with even more shine on the blue candle. Here's a final look at how my card has turned out. I hope you love the rainbow and fun birthday candles partnered with that beautiful speckled aura happy birthday sentiment. Here's another version I made of the card using Distress Oxides for stenciling and I didn't have the heart to trim down my background so it is a very large five and a half by five and a half card.
I hope you had fun celebrating Pretty Pink Posh's 10th birthday with me. You can find more from me on my YouTube channel, Lauren Taylor Made, but I do hope you'll like and subscribe here at scrapbook.com where you can find the best selection, free inspiration, and they're always fast to ship. Bye!